Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And today we're talking about Star Wars Destiny. Now I've already done a review of Star Wars Destiny uh, with Sam on a Miami Dice and in that review I explained how the game works. So if you want to know how the game works, you're going to go watch that because I'm not going to re-explain how the game works. But when Sam and I reviewed the game, we did it with the starter decks and I think four booster packs, which wasn't really much. You couldn't even play the full game. But Jason has bought everything. Um, and so we got a chance to play with everything. Okay, played several times with, I don't think I've seen every card, but I'm pretty close to seeing a lot of them at this point. And so I want to go over, we're gonna do this in two videos. In one, we're gonna just talk about this game. In another, we're gonna compare it to Marvel Dice Masters because they're the only two collectible dice games on. So we're not gonna do a lot of comparison here in that video, but today, I want to get, well, especially Jason's opinion of the game and my own. Um, uh, like, like I re, now that I can see the whole thing. So the biggest bugbear in the room here when it comes to this game is the fact that it's a collectible dice game, a collectible model. And a lot of people do not like the model. I, I know you're not a fan of the model. I'm not a fan of the model. I mean, I, I mean, it's not like he's not still. I, Still bought a lot, as as we talked about when we live played this recently. I bought six booster boxes worth in order to get basically a complete set. And I still had to go onto Board Game Week to try to trade to get the six dice that I was missing. I mean, I had extra dice so I could trade, but having to spend all that time trading is just, it's a waste of time. I'd rather just get everything in one shot and not have to deal with that. Okay, but that's never going to happen. So with the collectible aspect... I gotta say at this point in time, I don't think getting a starter deck will cut it. All right, there's a lot of games where you can buy a starter deck, for example, Magic the Gathering. You can buy a starter deck of Magic the Gathering and you can have fun playing against someone else. You can have fun playing someone else with these starter decks, but I feel like you're gonna feel unsatisfied after a while. Well, there's two problems with just the starter decks. One is that the starter deck only comes with 20 cards in the deck instead of 30 cards. So you're not playing a full deck game. You're only playing a 20 card deck game. So you're not, you don't really, even get the full experience of a 30 card deck, you only get a 20 card deck with the starter game. So realistically, you do need to buy boosters. And in order to get a good assortment, because there's four different colors, there's red, blue, yellow, and gray, in order to get a good assortment, you really need to buy enough boosters to get enough cards of each color to go with your character. I feel like 10 boosters is a minimum, like a bare minimum, because four wasn't close to enough, right? I got a couple cards. And the starter decks, I don't think they come with any yellows in this two starters. Finn. Finn is yellow. Finn is yellow, but there's not a lot of yellow cards, right? I don't well, okay. know. Okay, let me rephrase that. There's no yellow bad guys. No, there's no yellow bad guys. And there's no one of the, uh, there's no red good guys. Yeah, because Ray is blue. Ray is blue, right. Yeah. So that can be problematic, right? If you're trying to say, ooh, I want to, you, you get like, a, let's say you get a cool character. So on the, on the bad guys, you get a, a job of the hut. And you're like, ooh, I want to use job of the hut. Well, not really, because you don't have enough cool yellow cards put in a deck to make it worthwhile. Exactly. You're gonna have to buy it. What I'm saying is, this is an expensive game. It really is, because how much is a booster? It's like two, three dollars? Uh, I think they're three dollars each, or four dollars, or well, five dollars? Let's just go three, low. Three, four, or five. I'm, let's just go I'm low. Let's sure. say they're three. Let's say you find them cheap for three. That's still $30 to just kind of get into the game a little bit. You're gonna probably pay a good chunk. So uh, I don't wanna to get too caught up in the CCG aspect and the, the price aspect, but there's that. Let's talk about the quality of the game. The, the game uses artwork. Um, I don't know if it's- I I'm, think it's the standard Fantasy Flight artwork that they use for everything? I'm pretty sure that, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're using the same artwork that they've used for other games, but it's drawn artwork, and I, I, I think it's pretty good. It I, looks really I, good. I think it's great. I think the artwork in this game is great. I mean, it, it's, I mean, here's like Luke Skywalker. I mean, you can't really see it that well, but Luke Skywalker's card looks great, and I think the artwork in this game is, is great, and the cards really capture the good parts of the movies and put you into the feel that you're in the movies. And not only do I think that, I, th I think that the dice are what really matters. And this is one thing I, I keep saying is these dice do not look that good on film. They do not look that good in pictures, but in person they look pretty good. They're great. Great They're, is a I little mean, strong. I wish there was a little pictures. bit less of the blue on them maybe. 
Sometimes they, they're a little crowded, but the symbols are easy to see. Well, I think the reason they did that is they the stick before they put the lamination on top of the stickers, I guess they figured round stickers would sit better than doing full screw like Now these aren't stickers. These are like they're like printed on somehow. Well, no, it what No, they said it's not a sticker. They said that specifically. Well, it look what it looks like to me. I don't know how it's done because I noticed some have like the edges. So I think that it was like some sort of not sticker per se, but it was Maybe it was a sticker, but then they laminate over it and then they hot laminate the whole thing. So there's a coating. It's not like the picture is right at the top. There's like this plastic coating, but I think there, it's a sticker with a plastic coating laminated over it. But, but I guess I'm, it's hard to describe it, but it, it's definitely there's something over it. It's not the picture is not the very top. There's a, layer, a little thin layer of plastic over it that encapsulates the whole die. And... I guess they figured square dice, you couldn't do that as well. And having these rounded dice with the rounded corners kind of well, I'm that glad problem. they did the rounded dice anyway. Okay, yeah. so you, you think the components are good? This is not the, that good, though. The, this is the bad part of it. This is the starter deck, right? And it comes with some dice in it. It's like, ooh, you can put more dice in it. Popping the dice in and out, you're going to get rid of this. And I think one of the biggest problems this game is going to have, at least initially, it's a pain in the neck to store this game. It is. I, I'm surprised that Fantasy Flight hasn't put out a storage box yet. I mean, I don't know how many dice are there. At least 100 dice, if not more. There's no place to store them. And this thing isn't good enough. Right now I'm using one of the booster boxes. And I have everything in one of those booster boxes. But I would really like a storage Yeah, but you're, we are essentially dumping everything out. All the dice to use them each turn. And that's just not the easiest way. The rest of the counters and everything is fine. But that's all superficial stuff in a sense. Um, be, but before we get, gameplay is the most important, but before we get into gameplay, I want to talk about theme. This is the first Star Wars game that I know of that Fantasy Flight has put out that has gone to the episodes one, two, and three, the episodes that everyone hates, or at least everyone on the internet loudly dislikes them. Because um, the, some of the characters, I know Count Dooku is in the game. Amidala's in the game. Grievous is in the game. Right. Qui-Gon's in the game. Right, and they went to all the different movies. They went from, well, they didn't do Rogue One, but they did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. They've done all the movies, and that's kind of cool for me. I'm someone who likes to have all these different characters. Like General Grievous, I like him. I think he's a cool character, yeah. so I'm glad he's in this game. At the same time, they really kind of did some, it feels like you're like, that character's cool. That character's cool. And there's a lot of missing big characters. Chewbacca's not in here. Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi's not in here. Well, he's in here. Yoda's in spirit. not in here. But um, there, there's car I mean, there's cards with pictures of all those characters. Like here, let the Wookiee win. But there's no actual Chewbacca card. There's just an action card that fits with Chewbacca. So every character is kind of in here, but not as characters that you could use on the sides of the battle. And I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying that that's the way it is. I just found it interesting that instead of like they didn't pick like one movie and do the main characters from that movie. They kind of just went all over the place and picked yeah. various characters. But but I wonder if they picked them based on abilities, because it feels like each character's ability really fits the way that character is. Like General Grievous, his ability to steal stuff from other people, and you know, because right, he stole all the lightsabers from the Jedi. That, yeah, exactly. So I think they themed it more on that, and you know, more characters coming. I know there's at least two more sets coming out. They've, they've announced three sets. And oh, they yeah, have already? Yes, and in the third set, Grand Admiral Thrawn is in it um, from the um, Heir to the Empire series. That is amazing. So, yeah, they showed artwork for that. And the fact that there's three sets, you know, there's something to look forward to. I have a feeling that everyone that isn't in here, whether it's Chewbacca, Boba Fett, um, Yoda, they're coming. And um, Samuel Jackson's guy... They're all coming. Mace Windu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mace Windu. They're, they're all coming. Okay, so let's talk about gameplay. First, there's deck building. And deck building in this game, I found this to be kind of refreshing on how simple it is. Yes. You really just, you're only adding the points together for the characters, and it's 30 points. Now, I will say that I wish it was a little easier because you'll be like, oh, I'll use Luke, he's 15 or 20, and I'll use Han, he's 14 or 18. Uh, all right, the 15 and 14 make 29, and you'll like sit there for the longest time trying to get exactly 30 is kind of a hard thing to do. It, it's almost impossible to get exactly 30. Well, no, it's not impossible, but if you like, if you like, if you want to use those two characters together, you you're not getting 30. I, Let's say I, I want to I, use Han and Leia. I have 18 and 12. Oh, they do make 30. Han and Leia make 30. 
um, if you used a double Han, but then you would need two two Han dice. Oh, actually, they, they made uh, Leia they 16 and him way. 14. They make 30 either way. That's well, interesting. They the made second them... die costs four for most of the characters. Luke's also costs four. No, Luke's no, cost costs five. five. And that's kind of an interesting thing. I, I, I really am kind of fascinated by this whole take a character and there's a certain amount of points, and then you get some certain amount of points if you want another die for that character. And, and it's interesting because if you have two dice for the character... They have the same hit points, but obviously they can do more powerful things if you roll the right dice. So it's a it's an interesting choice on whether you use the double die version or the single die version. I, I made sure to get double dice, well, for almost every character once I make these trades. That way you could have the choice. So anyone when any time we play, we have the choice of do we want to do single or double. 30 is a weird number, and the fact that it's exactly 30, you can't just say, okay, we want to play a 40-point deck now, or we want to play a 20-point deck. 30. I guess you could. There's no law that says you can't change the number of it, points. It's just these little characters that they added. Well, at least I was looking at the good guy side, and most of the little characters like eight. There's not really a seven. So when you're at that 23, you can't really throw anything in. You're like, okay, 23, I guess I'm stuck. I'll have to use a second die for something. I don't think it's possible to have a four-character one. No, I guess it is if you yeah, use four is. sevens. You could, yeah, you could use four sevens um, or two sevens and two eights. Okay, well, and, either and way... And have the deck with no cool characters, but, like, a bunch of rebel troopers. But I think it's really cool, though, that the game, when you're... So you, you have the points for those characters, but then you build your deck, and it's easy. What color are your characters? Blue and red? You can use blue, red, and gray cards. Your characters are both red? You can use red and gray cards. Your characters are yellow and blue? Yellow, blue, and gray. And, and only dark or light, depending on... Yeah, that. and, like, only... Heroes only can use hero cards, and villains only can use villain cards, so you really have kind of two decks. You have the villains deck with villain characters and then villain colors and then you have hero deck with hero characters and hero colors and then you have the neutrals the i guess the grays that could be used on either deck well what i'm saying is that you don't have to sit there and go okay what's my ratio of resources to other cards how many spells no you can just throw cards in you can put a mo like I want Luke to have a lightsaber. I can put lightsabers in his deck. Yeah. Like he can't only carry one of those at a time or one of the of a specific certain lightsaber. He has special lightsaber. But if I really want him to have a lightsaber, I can put multiples in. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk now about the game flow itself. This is, I think, the best thing about Star Wars Destiny is how fast back and forth is. Uh, I take an action, you take an action, I take an action, you take an action, and I really like that. Roll dice, add dice to this pool in the middle, use dice from that pool to attack the enemy. It's really simple back and forth, and it never feels like it's, there's, it feels very action-packed to me. Yes, it, it, it really feels like every time you play, the games are quick. It feels like you're in a battle. It feels like you're really in like a Star Wars scenario, whether it's a lightsaber battle or whether it's fighting you know, to get to the uh, shield generator in Endor. Like everything, you, know, you could feel like you're anywhere in this. And you're, you, know, you really, I mean, I guess space battles are the only thing this doesn't do because this is sort of like combat-based battles. There's no, I mean, Millennium Falcon could fly in and do There's something. There's Millennium Falcon and TIE Fighters. But, but in general, most of these battles are kind of hand-to-hand -hand or people shooting at each other kind of battles, which, which really is the action parts of the movies, and you feel the theme comes through very well during this game. The game is very quick. Uh, I really like how speedy it is. I mean, a game... I mean, when we just did some live ones, I think each game took like 20, 30 minutes. Um, but, but when we are playing in real life, we, me and Jason could crank out a game in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Really fast. Um, so I, I'm not ending this yet, but I, I want to talk about what we think about the game. So we might as well start with our ratings early. What's your awesomeness rating on this one? My awesomeness rating for this one, and I would have given it a little higher. I'm deducting a little bit because of the collectability aspect, so I'm giving it an awesomeness rating of an 8. And it would have been a 9 if it was easier to get your hands on everything, but I'm going to give it an 8 because of the collectability, but I still think it's an amazing game. It's really... As I'd say, it's really awesome. It's fun. It's it's more of a card game than a dice game. The, that's the interesting thing. It's a card game, and the dice adds some random elements in the battle, but it's really a card game. How about you? Yeah, I'm actually with Jason there on the 8, but there's a couple things that are different for me. I initially said this was an 8. Then my rating, I played it some more, and my rating was like slipping. I was like, oh, maybe it's a 7, maybe it's a 6 even. And then I went back up to an 8, and it kind of fluctuates. And I'll tell you, there's two main reasons. The positives are the game is fast, the actions are back and forth, and it's a really strong Star Wars theme. 
But there are times where it doesn't matter how cool you made your deck or how well you're playing, the luck is really strong in this one. And there are sometimes, I was, was a game I played against you where I re-rolled Darth Vader's dice like five times. And you couldn't get And I hit. couldn't get him to hit anything. And I lost that game because of that bad rolling. Now, that's not the end of the world. It's not a long game, right? And I'm not interested at all in the tournament scene for this. I'm, I'm never interested in tournament scenes anyway. And I'm kind of cautious. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this game doesn't turn into a meta game where if I meet someone and they're like, ooh, you like Star Wars Destiny? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, I have the ultimate... Jabba, you know, Ray deck that, you know, does this, this, and this. And I'm like, oh, oh, I didn't know that deck existed. I brought this deck. And he goes, Pfft. Yeah. I, I hope that that does not happen with this. Um, and I'm, I'm afraid that it will. I'm afraid that it will get to the point where I'll only be able to look for other people who play it on a very casual level. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope not either. I hope that it stays casual. And It's not going to. Well, they're okay? always it's gonna... competitive in every collectible game i guess there's always a competitive scene but you know if you're just like me and you get everything then you can just play with a friend and pick and choose but i don't know that do. i want to get everything for this game i mean look how much money you put into yes. just this first set yes which and then is... and then they're going to put out two or three sets a year you know and it's going to be difficult that's that, that that's a pretty pricey game to stay up with but I'm hoping that they keep putting out more starter decks because I like the starter decks. So if you buy several starter decks, maybe you can put those together and be fine. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, the collectability is the is the biggest problem I have with this game because we're looking at 100 dice here. I have another, I don't even know how many dice I have at home that basically I could do nothing with. Uh, I could trade them. So I was like, I told people online, hey, Legendary for Legendary, I'll throw in two rares with it because I've got all these extra oh, rares. Oh, I didn't realize that. So you have all these dice here. You have a lot more at home, you're saying. There's at least twice as many of this at home that with the extras that you get because every single pack comes with one die. And I opened up 36 times 6, whatever that is. 216 packs I opened up. And this is like less than 100 of the packs. This is about 100 dice or so. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, so okay. Another... I didn't realize there was that much extra dice in this game. So even though... Oh, so you have. So let's say you get a lightsaber, and then you get a second lightsaber, and then you get four, then you get a fifth lightsaber. That fifth lightsaber is really not worth anything to you. Exactly. And you're... I mean, I have... Like, I got a third Han Solo. So I have three Han Solos. The most you could ever use is two Han Solos. So I'm like, oh, I wish I would have gotten instead. How can my... you use two at the most? Because you can put two dice. Well, two dice, even though you only use oh, one card. Oh, okay, I see that. So you get that second Han Solo, and that card is worthless the to you. The card's worthless, but the die is good. And then I only got one Luke, so I'm sitting here going, I really want to trade this third Han Solo for a Luke. And then people are like, well, Han Solo is only worth $28, and Luke is worth $30. And this is the whole thing why I don't like collectible. And this is why huh. I think that a set should just be a set, and it should come with everything. Okay, well, again, I don't, we don't mean to derail that on this, but we do want to talk about all the aspects of it. I certainly understand that the collectability thing is, is a thing, and people like it. And I know that some people also say it's not fair to use the collectability model to, to affect your thing of a game, and it definitely is. Are you kidding me? If there was a great game out there and it cost $10,000, I would say it's not worth it. I don't care how great the game is. Unless that's an it was made of gold. Right, but that's an extreme example, right? Well, even if it was, it still wouldn't be worth it because I'd rather you buy a lot of other things. So I have to look at the price. I have to look at the model when looking at this type of game. Um, but be that as it may, it's a still really fun game. I, I definitely recommend you try it. I don't know that it's for everybody. If you are someone with that, I must have everything. Um... I would recommend you don't get it because I don't think you need it. I would just get it and buy booster packs here and there and slowly over time build some fun decks. Or go and buy all his extras. Yeah, I might have a, a sale well, people for the like extras. Him, right? You can get a lot of, of, of you know, commons and stuff and probably have a really good time. Yeah, I mean, you don't need the rares. Obviously, Luke, Han, Darth Vader, those are the ones that are, the ones that are hard to get and you have to buy a lot to get them and, you know... Besides that, I think the game's great. So I know I've, I've talked a lot about the collectability aspect that I don't like, but I do love this game a lot, and I did invest in it because it was worth it. And it is a, for me, it feels like a good investment of the money because it's a great game, it plays well, and I think it's better than their other card games. I think it's better than the Star Wars card game that they did before this. I think this one is a better playing I agree on that one. This, for me, kills their Star Wars living card game. Kills it. Um, so, 
That's Star Wars Destiny. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.